Hey, hi. Um, what is it? It's Friday. Thank God it's Friday, right? Yeah. Uh, spent a lot of time on my hands and knees the other day um, working in here. I want to show you what I did because I'm up to the point. I'm about to fire up the tractor and start to bring gravel in. Um, I want to show you something a few lessons learned. Uh, I had a, several people tell me, hey, you probably don't need to put forms underneath your trench drains for the concrete. You put concrete under the trench drain to support the weight. Uh, but I really didn't do a very good job of telling them how high the trench drains were above the dugout floor. Yeah, I should have had forms. Let me show you real quick. Yeah, a little, a little jerky there. I'm tired. Um, what happened is there's no way I could get concrete to stand up like that. And I ended up doing a lot of separate pours, you know, separate packings, if you will. What I found worked out really well were um, Harbor Freight furniture clamps, holding 2 by 4s and stuff on the back side. Well, I used a stick to push that concrete in. I mean, really pack it in so you can see that it's coming out the other side. I've, I've got a very secure footing under there. I've got two bags of concrete left, and all i got to do is fill in that section here. And, and then I feel very good about how tight I have everything down here. What I'll do is I'm going to leave a small, modest gap between the gravel and the trench drains so that when the concrete does get poured, they'll be able to tap it down there and do that final kind of slush up underneath there. Uh, but these these are going to have hard concrete beneath them. There's no risk of them actually sinking, but when you actually, if I do roll a um, a tote or something filled, an IBC or, a, or an apple tote, um, there's no chance of them crunching or going out of trim. They won't break, but all the effort put into making all the water drain <laughs> towards the middle will have been lost and I don't want that. The other thing I did was I packed concrete underneath those corners to stabilize them so that when I'm packing the gravel on top of them I don't push them down and I don't make them wobble. Same thing here. Had clay there and because what's really holding up this end here is the plastic of the trend of the sump pit I pack some concrete there and that'll be cured up soon my next step I you can see I've pulled all the uh, tools and stuff off the counters the laser level remains I need that with my uh, my stick what I'm going to be doing now is bringing the tractor in and starting to pull gravel in um, I'll just work away from the trench drain where I need to do that last touch up of concrete. There's no sense stalling. I gotta get it done. Uh, just to drive home the point of how valuable this real estate I'm in is, is if you look out in the aisle of the barn, if that were really clear because everything was in here, I could literally take the tractor, because it's a little tractor, and turn and not only dump gravel in here, I could dump gravel there, but I can't. That it, and All the gravel that comes in here is probably going to end up in a wheelbarrow, and I'm going to move it around by hand. So I got a couple hours of grunting like a pig to move gravel in here. I'll be borrowing a friend's gas-powered compactor and he has a hand tamper and the hand tamper will certainly pay off working in the close quarters around here until I build the gravel bed up because it's it's a little tight there so it's going to work out well my goal is tomorrow uh, I'm in a class with Red Cross for the lion's share of tomorrow which of course is when the weather's better but Sunday uh, regrettably it won't be much of a day of rest uh, reflection, no rest. And I'll be finishing this, and what you're going to see, and I'll shoot video, is first of all, I'll have a, a nice flat level surface of gravel. 
Then I roll the plastic out onto it. And then I cut and I put the foam on top of it. And last but not least, I drop that wire. I don't know if you can even see the wire from here. And that wire will go down and when they pour the concrete, they'll be pulling that up into the concrete to give it more strength. Uh, especially with an expansion and contraction, which should be minimalized because, Lord, I've put a lot of work into isolating temperature-wise the floor from the outside world. Uh, if push comes to shove, let's say they don't get to it by Wednesday, the poor. A week from then, a lot of the stuff that you see certainly... My arbor press, the grinder that's in the other room, there's the pressure washer, my welder, a, a lot of items, generators, things like that will be tucked in here neatly so I can start to focus on cleaning the barn up and probably having room to spare in the garage so that we can... Uh, back Murphy in, there's Murphy, with her load of firewood as well as having Dottie's crib of uh, stove wood both at the same time in the garage. That would be huge. And getting that done before the snow flies is a very high priority. I'll be parking the laser level here in the corner, predictably. Um, I will recalibrate it, uh, because I moved it, to the stick. I am shooting for an accuracy of about an eighth of an inch. Hey, Mr. Nichols. Um, that eighth of an inch, I think, is fine for gravel. And the guys, when they put the uh, concrete in, uh, will do a bang-up job. Because I'm giving myself this half inch pitch over the drains here. They're, they're roughly a half inch below the average floor height um, with a, a two foot on left and right sides. There's a lot of room for error and w the drain will still drain and things will not be wobbly, wobbly on the floor. Uh, yeah, you know, what more can I say? I guess what I can say is I really should probably get back to work. Huh? I had a brownie with milk, so I'm pumped. Take care. Talk to you later.